uh, we felt Diana Hux had a word. And, uh, you know, you guys, some of you have heard her minister on uh, on some of our summer uh, Wednesday, whenever night we did that on, um, launch. God, that seems like a million years ago, right? Uh, but Diana, and of course, Diana ministers at almost every Sunday in children's church and many chapels, and she is a more than capable minister. And the first time I really heard Diana speak on um, in the summer, and not only did she beat up the religious spirit, she took a bat and just beat it like a pinata, right? <laughs> And I was just like, holy moly, she just beat the crap out of a religious spirit. And and I, I, I use those terms. That's I, I meant that, right? <laughs> you say crap and the religious spirits, yeah. Um, so, you know, but we, you know, we really felt like she had a word. And so um, I'm excited not only that she's ministering this morning, but that I get to be present to hear what she has to share. So at this time, let's just welcome Diana Hux as she comes to minister. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Whew. So during worship, I was just like, oh my gosh. I just feel like this wave, the only way I know how to explain it, like this reviving wave is blowing in and I was like oh we're gonna kick unbelief's butt today I knew we were gonna kick a butt but I wasn't sure which one but I was like oh god so I'm just believing that that wave just increases in this place because there is such a moment of reviving that I feel right now and I'm just like oh hope I can get through this so all right so I want to talk to you guys and put first of all I'm honored Thank you guys for, this is an honor. It's nerve-wracking, but it's such an honor to be trusted with this pulpit and up here, and I'm just, I'm very honored today. I'm very nervous, so just hang with me. So I have been going through a personal journey of learning with God. He's always teaching, right? And sometimes it's Ugh, it's not that much fun. But today I want to talk about hearing God's voice and responding with the action of contending. And I've heard contending my whole entire life, and I'm like, yeah, okay, we contend, we contend. Okay, yeah. But I haven't really heard the word contending. And so I began to really study and really seek the Lord of, okay, what is contending, God? What does this really look like? What does it really mean? And when you ask God, you better buckle up and get ready, because here we go. And I feel we are an active church. We are, we are awesome. I, I, I know we are, but there's always room for growth. There's always room for more. So I want to talk about that today, about contending. And the only way I can describe it is there's three stages with God. There's a revealing. God reveals things to us. He reveals the promises. He reveals his plans, his purposes. And then it's like two mountains. Just kind of imagine it with me. The mountain of revealing. And then you have the mountain of fulfillment. But there's a valley that you must walk through to get from one mountain to the other mountain. And that's what I want to focus on today is the valley of contending and what that means and what that really looks like. And it's not always fun, but in what I have learned for myself, it's very, very exciting for prophets and people to come in here and they're like, oh, this is what your church is to do. This is what's going to happen in the city of Ardmore. And then you get the personal words and promises and you're like, oh yeah, let's do it. Let's go. So the revealing happens, but now what? Well, there's a responsibility as, as us as believers to contend and to walk and make sure we make those plans, purposes, and promises to fulfillment. And sometimes we get lost in this contending valley because I have learned that I've had to, I have to wait up on the Lord. There's no shortcuts with God. And just because he says I have something doesn't mean I'm going to get it right then. 
there is action that I have that I have a responsibility an action of contending to make it to the mountain of fulfillment okay and in this contending I have learned that that is where I'm molded and I am strengthened because guys we have to be strengthened before we can ever actually carry the fulfillment of the promises and the purpose and the plans of God Contending is very necessary, even though we don't like it. So, in between the position of the promise revealed and the promise fulfilled, there is a gap. What is it? Contending. Okay? And we as believers have to learn how to respond to the transition of what? The revealed to the fulfillment. And that's what I want to focus on today. What, are, what is contending? Why is it necessary? And what, it, what does it look like? Because I was never taught. I was like, people would say, contend, contend. Okay, what does that mean? Why is it necessary? And that's the things that God has been teaching me. And so I looked up what contend really even means. You know, that's the first clue. Look up the word. (sighs) Know what it means. So contend means to exert an intense effort on the behalf of something. So when we get a word... And God's like, okay, this is what's going to happen in your city. You better be ready to put an intense effort on the behalf of that purpose and that plan. Same with your personal life. Oh, that's wonderful. My kids are going to do all this. You ready to walk it out? You ready to put some intense effort on the behalf of even their promises? It also means to fight for something. And yes, God has placed things in our hands, and he goes, here you go. You can have this. But there is, unfortunately, a fight, and there is a contending that we have to be willing to do to see it happen. Okay. So the pathway of his glory is his will, his word, and his ways. And all three of these work together to see a promise birthed in our lives. His will, his word, and his ways. Those three things are very important. And those are the things that we must be diligently seeking upon to even have a a promise birth into our lives. So I want to talk about four things that God has really put before me, and it has helped me to continue to move forward in the fulfillment because there's lots of things that are not fulfilled in my life yet. There are some things that have. But, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I think I was t- talking to Miss Shelley, and I was like, oh, there's, I feel this frustration in the spirit. I just want to take a sledgehammer and knock this wall down. I'm like, I don't understand. You know, Shelly's just like our mama, and she's like, yeah, she's so encouraging. And finally, I went home that night. I'm like, God, what in the world is going on? And all I could hear is, Diane, it's the contending. It's the contending. Keep moving keep moving forward, keep going. It's the contending for what I have said for you. I was like, okay, here we go. All right, so the first thing, and we have all been taught this, but we have to be reminded that our contending is not all about us. Okay? Yeah. So we have to realize that contending or even breakthrough for our lives is not all about us. And I have learned that nothing is about all about me. Nothing. It doesn't matter. My worst day is not about me. My best day is not about me. Because things happen to us in life, and did you know that it's not for you just to sit around and feel sorry for yourself? We do that. I do that. I've done that. But it's not. that's not what we're supposed to do. Actually, What we're supposed to do is find the goodness and kindness of God in those situations so we can impart that to someone else that will face the same junk that we just faced because it's not all about us. And contending for something is more than just you, okay? So we have to remember that. Um, Let's see. All right. So even, um, I have notes like everywhere, focus. Okay, so even when we're um, 
contending for things in the city. We're contending for things in our church. We're contending for, you know, things in our personal lives, breakthroughs in our family and stuff. If we could get to that place of, oh my gosh, if I would do this different or if I would do that, if we would just move us out of the way, it would actually motivate us to do more. Because as a mom, there are many times if I didn't have five children watching me every second of my life, I, I don't know. I think there would be things I'd be like, eh, eh, it's all right. But because I'm motivated by something being bigger than just myself, you know, and I work in the school, and it is every bit of my heart. These kids of the school, I'm just, sometimes I'm like, Diana, you need to turn your heart off just a little bit. But my journey is bigger than just me. And if I can get a hold of that and I can realize that even my victories are not about me, that my victories and my accomplishments is to impart and to strengthen and to help someone else do the same. So it's bigger than just us, guys. Okay, so in the contending, we are strengthened in God. The only way I can describe what I have felt over probably the last year is lifting weights spiritually. Does anybody lift weights in here? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I remember one time I was praying. It might have been, I can't remember exactly if it was for um, the healing rooms or what, but I'm praying in my room and I pace constantly, which you can tell I can't be still. And I'm just praying and I'm believing and I'm just believing for the city and going and going. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? At first I was like, oh, it's the weighty, you know, it's the glory. And then I'm like, no, this is different. This is different. And all of a sudden I just saw like these two weights in my hands. And I was like, Oh, and God's like, in the contending, you get stronger. When we are contending and we are believing for something and we are putting action to it, it's like we're lifting weights in the spirit. Because in the contending is where you get strong. Okay? And something else, no, wait, I'll wait on that. Um, and also in the contending, where my notes are, um, it causes us to grow up. Has anybody had to grow up? over the last year or so. And also, um, as we're being strengthened, every motivation within us will be tested. And that's the fun part, right? Why, why are you doing what you do? Why, what are you, you know, and I've had to ask myself before, why do I do what I do? Is it for me or is it for something bigger than just me, okay? Okay. So, as you're in the contending, you may feel a little tired spiritually, and you may get sore spiritually, but it's part of being strengthened in the contending, because if I go and I work out at the gym every single day, I'm going to feel it, right? I'm going to feel it. But eventually, there is a resistance factor that's going to work on my behalf, because I'm going to begin to see muscles. I'm going to begin to slim up. And I really should go to the gym. I would feel better. But there is something about if we, in the contending, if we put action forth in prayer, in going out and doing something into the community, praying for someone, prophesying over someone, guys, that is action. That's like working out in the spirit. And there is something that eventually will work on your behalf and no longer will you be terrified to prophesy to someone in Walmart. Maybe. <laughs> Or you see someone that has a broken arm and that needs healing, okay, you will be strengthened and you will be strong and you will know whose you are and you will start changing the world. So we get stronger, okay? All right, the next one. This one's fun. Our contending does threaten the enemy. And this is where a lot of warfare comes in. And I'm not going really deep on warfare because I do not want to go there. We'll leave that one up to Andy. But we, we have a real enemy, okay? And our success scares him to death. And so when we're in, during the contending, you may get some 
junk thrown at you. But you just have to remember that's why we must put on the full armor of God every day. So we're not destroyed every time we turn around because you know what? I'm sorry. He's he's not going to just be like, oh, sure, go ahead. Here's your revealing. That doesn't scare him. The contending is where he wants to get you. In that valley of contending is where he wants to knock your head off so you stay. Because life happens, right? We've all been through junk. And I, I, I just, well, I won't go there. Okay, so life happens, and when life comes at us 100 miles an hour, I'm sorry, fear and unbelief will hit us right in the face. And fear and unbelief's ultimate goal and assignment for you is to get you paralyzed in the rut of contending where you don't go any further. It is to stop you and to cause you, you know, be like, uh, yeah, you got this word, but everything opposite is happening. So what are you going to do now? Uh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep contending because my God gave me a re- revelation of what he's going to do, what he has for me personally So I'm going to contend, and I'm going to keep going. But you would be surprised. I even know ministers personally because life hit them so hard in the face that they stopped, and they gave up because that is unbelief and fear's ultimate goal for us. So if we put on the uh, the full armor of God, it's a little easier to, to battle this stuff. And we have to remember that our wrestling match, and this is the hard sometimes, because I feel like people are just mean. And I want to be mad at them. But the wrestling match is not with people. It's not with our husbands. Husbands, it's not with your wives, even though sometimes it's not with the person that about knocked us off the road the other day and then wanted to yell at us like it was our fault. No, the wrestling match is against the demonic powers of hell. Okay? And we, and I'm learning, I'm getting better, that when things happen and make me want to, you know, hurt somebody, yeah, okay, amen, that I'm like, oh, God, it's not against flesh and blood. It's against the powers and the principalities of hell that are trying to get me distracted and contending for the greater works and the greater things of you. So we have to keep that in front of us because if not, we just gonna hate everybody. And then we can't change the world, okay? Okay, and you know, when we were born, unfortunately, we were born between a huge cosmetic war between good and evil. Right? I mean, it's just, that's just it. But we were born to be effective spiritual warriors. We were not born to be seat warmers, even though sometimes it gets a little comfortable there. But what happen, What happens there? If you get a promise and God gives you a revelation of something and you just sit on that seat, what's going to happen? You are not going to make it to the fulfillment and the manifestation of what God has said for you because we have to be active all the time. It does get tiring, but it's okay. His grace and mercy is there. So, and we have to remember that the devil doesn't want any of this happening, none of it. And if he can bring division, if he can bring fear, if he can bring unbelief, Whatever he can do, he, he's just a jerk. He will do whatever he can do, right? It doesn't matter. But that's why we have to remember that we are giant slayers, and we are to slay the giants. The giants aren't to slay us. So we have to pick up our weapons, which is the word of God, prayer, and we have to go after these things. Because if we don't, guys, we'll, we'll get stuck. Okay. Contending, your contending prepares the next generation. And this is where it always speaks very loud to me because my heart is so about this generation. And we have to remember that others are watching us 24-7. Okay? And the teachers can understand this, which I do have five kids at home. 
and then I'm a children's pastor, and then I come to school with a bunch of little kids, and I'm like, somebody's always watching me. I can't even get mad because they're all, I mean, pers- really, if I do, I have this little boy, and he's like, what's wrong with you? Are you upset? Nope, I'm good. But I'm just saying there are always eyes on us, and we have to remember that we are, in, we are not in a solo leg race. We're not. And sometimes we want to think we are. We want to think, oh, well, I can do this all alone, and I can just do whatever I want. I'm running my race. Nope, that's not how it works. Because we are actually in a relay race together. And it takes a team effort, including the joining of all the generations, to come into a greater works that Jesus promised And the thing is, is often the fulfillment of the plans and purposes of God doesn't just rely on our generation. It actually relies on the will and attitude of all the generations. And that's why we have to remember that this is not a solo. It's not just for one generation. Because one generation can't bring the fulfillment and the manifestation of God to the earth. It takes... The, all the generations, and it takes their attitude and their will. So what are we willing? What are we willing to sacrifice? What are we willing to contend for for the next generation? Um, and the sad thing is, I've done it. I know I have. There have been moments that I was right at and I have a certain situation in my head right now, that I was right at the edge of crossing over, and I dropped it because of my attitude, because I was sick and tired of the whole situation. But I know that there was a fulfillment that was right at the edge, and I chose because I was all about myself, and it dropped. Now, God's good. He will, he will come back, he will, but we have to be, we have to understand that we can't be people that just drop the purposes and the promises of God. And that's what I love about this place is Jamie and Andy are not going to let us drop the promises. And I know that there's times that they probably, I can't even imagine the weight that they have to carry, but that's why we have to remember we are in a relay race together. These two alone cannot do it. But if we all do our part in the contending and the believing, we will see the fulfillment. I've heard a lot of stories, and I was reading some the other night, but I didn't. I should have, you know, printed them off or something. But I was reading about this guy talking about revival and how he said that there was a lot of manifestations, there was a lot of things happening, but because of conflict and because people got all about themselves, that they literally, right before he believed one of the greatest revivals that this city had seen, it got dropped. Because there are so many times that we get into this place of contending which is good and we get active and we get to going but then we get a big head or we I don't know begin to I don't know maybe take it for granted of what God's really doing and that's why I love these healing rooms right now because when we sit there and I've been on the prophetic a couple times I'm just like oh God you're real I know he's real, but to see him and to know that you know nothing about that person and for him to come and say those things and then they'll be like, yeah, you're just like, oh my goodness. But that, what we do here is all part of that contending for the city because it's going to break open the fulfillment of what God has promised and he has said. So the contending looks like something, right? Right? We have to be active. Okay, let's see. So, as believers, again, I just said it, we are not called to beat seat warmers because we have a responsibility 
to contend with one another to see everything that Jesus paid for on the cross come to reality in the earth. And without contending and without being active and believing and working together, we won't see the full manifestation of what God paid for at the cross. And that really saddened me because I'm like, wow, no, I can't do it all by myself, but I can do my part. I can hold up my part of the wall and I can contend and I can be part of seeing God's full promises and plans and purposes for this city and for this nation come to pass. So, the contending. That is what I have been going through. And again, it's just, it's not been easy. And there's been times that I'm like, oh, I'm going through a spiritual attack. And God's like, no, you're not. You're just contending. Yes, there are spiritual attacks, but it's part of the contending. And I just believe that we are at the breakthrough of the fulfillment in many, many areas in you guys personally, but in corporately, I'm like, oh God, we're almost there. And then there'll be another promise and purpose and plan to contend for, but there is something, something about to really break open. And I just was very aware over the last two weeks of God's like, contend harder keep going don't drop it don't lose it because you are at the edge of the fulfillment and that's what I want to just impart today that there is a reviving and yes we need to be revived we've been through a lot but because of his goodness and his mercy it doesn't matter where you're at and I don't know what you have been contending for personally but I'm here to say don't give up don't stop Don't get stuck in that valley of contending. Don't get stuck. Keep moving forward because it's more than just about you. Maybe you're contending for deliverance for your family. Maybe it's financially. Maybe it's healing. I don't know. But I do know that there is hope in the contending, even when it's hard and when you just want to blow it off. But you know what? Actually, you can't do that. You are not actually, you can't stay in the valley and be comfortable. You can't resign everything God has revealed to you. You don't get to throw your hands up. No, you get to get busy in in him and seek him and ask him what that looks like for you. It's going to look different for everybody. Okay, so I did see this the other day. I'm like, oh, this is really good. And I want to share these with you. It's called the um, yeses and no. So in order to succeed in life and ministry, some basic fundamental decisions must be applied every day. These basic wisdom decisions fall into the categories of the yes and no. And these were really good. I was just like, oh. So we're to say yes to the Lord and no to ourselves, right? Okay, what does saying yes to the Lord look like? Focus your faith on the giver and not the gift. Because so many times we can get so focused on what we carry and what we're called to do that we completely get our um, focus off of the giver. Hold on to the words God has given you with open uh, expectancy. What has God said to you? What has he promised you for your family, for your city, for your church? And you openly expect that. We can't be people that just walk around like, oh, whatever, God's will. Jamie has taught me that is not what you do, and it is not what you do. We have to be people that expect what he has said. Expect it. Believe it. Okay? Be thankful for what you've received. And that's like Marshall this morning in prayer. He was talking about he just felt that thankfulness for this place. And it was really funny because I felt that too coming here. I'm like, God, even though I have been through some of the hardest moments, God, I thank you. God, I thank you for this house. I thank you for these people. I thank you for this city that God is trusting us and believing that we will contend and push forward for. So be thankful for what you've received and what you're going to receive. Um, it says, follow Daniel's example and pray for the promises into existence. 
So we are to pray our, okay, we get a promise. We have a responsibility to pray those things into existence. And the biggest tool that you'll ever use is prayer. And unfortunately, sometimes even in my own life, that's like the last thing I do. I'm like, why am I not praying about this? I'm crying about it. I'm telling the whole world about it. And it's like, hello, <laughs> pray, pray your, your promises, pray your breakthroughs, pray them into existence. And then fight the good fight. Do spiritual battle according to the word of God. Yes, there is a battle. You're going to have to fight. There are things that you have to do. So put your full armor of God on and let's do it. Okay, the things that we have to say no, and these were like, wow. The things we have to say no to ourselves, we have to put, uh, put down fantasies and speculations and bring every thought captive to Jesus Christ. And if you've been walking through here very long, you know that the battle is right here. There is a lot of mind games that go on. And it's not just here, it's actually everywhere. But that's why we have to put those things down and we have to bring every captive, or I mean, bring every thought captive to him to be able to even contend. Because if we're, you know, it wasn't too long ago, I'm sitting there and I, I just, all I can do is picture like in this valley and I'm believing and all of a sudden I get hit with these crazy, crazy mind games. And I'm just like, oh, oh my gosh, I just want out of here. Anyone ever feel like that? Because, <laughs> yes, <laughs> because that is part of the battle. That is part of bringing every thought captive because guys, if he, if he can get a hold of your mind and win there, he's won. Embrace discipleship. We need discipleship. We have to be willing to learn and be taught, okay? Because, guys, it's dangerous if we just go out there and do whatever we want. Yeah. Just think if you run into a demon-possessed person or, like, or not, yeah. Anyways, and it's just like, oh, no, just, you don't need to deal with them right in Walmart, Okay. Take them to Dwayne. <laughs> Deal with them in Walmart. See, this is why you have to embrace discipleship, guys. You've got to know, yeah, we have to be taught. And then we have to be willing to go through the death and resurrection process. Guys, we have to die to ourselves. We have to die to the things within us because I'm telling you, our flesh will never make it from reveal to fulfillment because we're lazy, we're tired, we get weak, we get we fail, right? But if we would die to us and we would allow God to come in and resurrect the things of him within us, we would be unstoppable. That's what that's what carries these people. They're tired. They're tired people. But because of the things that God has brought to life in them it causes them to be able to continue to go okay learn to give grace and mercy to others as we are all still in training okay guys we have to be patient with people and this is the hard part with me sometimes because I'm just like you don't know that what's wrong with you get it together but we have to be people that we say no to our ugliness and we have to be merciful and graceful to others, okay? Because, you know, we are supposed to build the kingdom, and we can't build the kingdom if we're being ugly all the time. So, remember, contending is a real thing, and I just feel like it's really something, because like I said, I've heard it my whole life, and I'm just like, yeah, I contend. But understanding what you're going through will give you you'll have a more success rate into knowing, oh, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not going to die. I'm going to be okay. I'm, I'm going, this is what I'm going through. It's just the weight and the contending of what God has said. And I just, I am truly believing for this reviving wave to continue to come because a lot of it is we have, I know there's some things that I have gotten stuck. Now, I keep my prophetic words in front of me, but there are some of them like, mm, mm-hmm. And I just have to look at them 
because that unbelief has me stuck. And I'm just like, because unbelief, his ultimate goal, if he is a person, he's not a person, but you know what I mean, its ultimate goal is to get you paralyzed in a rut where you can't move. And I love how Olivia went after unbelief today because I'm like, oh, God, that is, that's really where it's at. Is so many of us get this revealing promise, plans, purpose of God, and we're excited. We are so excited. We go home, and we're like, oh, Lord. Or we just start walking it out a couple months. And then, like I said, everything opposite begins to happen. And then you look at this word, and you're like, mm, I don't think I believe it because that's unbelief's goal is so you will be paralyzed and you will be stuck in a rut and you won't ever make it to the fulfillment of what God has said for you personally, for us corporately, for our city and our nation. So, contend well, y'all. Contend well. And I, like I said, I just truly believe that it's very practical, but it's something that, I, that I've had to be taught of what is really going on. And so I can put my self in action and not sit there and cry all the time and think that life is just horrible because we do that sometimes but no it's just contending and don't get stuck don't get stuck just keep moving forward so God we just thank you for your revelation of what is happening in our lives what is going on in our city. And God, I just pray that this wave of reviving just continues to increase in everyone's life. And God, I thank you that you are drowning out defeat. You are drowning out unbelief. And God, you are causing a people to stand up and to have the courage to believe everything that you have revealed to us. And God, I pray that the angels of heaven would come and they would contend with us in that valley of the in-between of the revealing and the fulfillment. And God, that we would not be people that drop the promises and the plans and the purpose of you. But God, we would carry them and we would continue to contend for them and we would make it to the fulfillment. So God, you can be praised and your victory and your glory, God, can be manifest through this earth, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a good word, contending. Amen. And I, I'm just very aware, just even as Diana said, there, there's a wave of something fresh that's coming. And it's, it's not just coming, because we say that a lot. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You know, but I, I, there's just a, are you guys so aware that there's that thing of unbelief, that thing of un intimidation um, that's been very present in our region, it, it has really shifted. Not that there aren't still things that we're contending with, right? But I, I sense a definite shift in the last weeks. And, um, you know, I know that even when Wayland was here, and part of Wayland's assignment is to come alongside and help birth what is already present in the heart of a people in a church. And I, something has been put down, right? Something of the enemy has been put down in these last weeks. And, and can you hear it in worship? It's not just that the volume has increased, but sometimes when intimidation does get put down, there's a freedom that starts coming to us, but there's a sound of faith that is growing. Amen. And so something is powerfully happening. Amen. And I was just reminded as Diana was speaking this morning and I uh, of a word and a scripture. I'll have to find it. But basically, you know, Joseph received a promise. But until that promise came to pass, it says the word of the Lord tested him. Isn't it fun to be tested by the word of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. But he's doing something in our midst. Amen. So praise God. Remember tomorrow night, um, GHSSM, first portion of teaching on five-step prayer model, healing rooms this Saturday. If you're a part of Global Harvest or a graduate, a graduate, 
a graduate of GHSSM, you can minister in those. And uh, I just expect God just to continue to do powerful things. So, Father, we want to thank you today that you've been very present. Father, I thank you that the sound of faith is arising. Father God, I thank you that there's a sound of faith and joy and rejoicing that's coming forth from the dwelling place of the righteous. Father, I thank you that out of this house, Father God, out of our lives, out of this temple, God, there is something of your glory, your majesty, your faith that is being released. And Father, I thank you for your faithfulness, God. And I thank you, Lord, that that which you have determined to do in this city, you will do. And Lord, we align our hearts with you, and we thank you, God, for what you're doing. And we ask God for more in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So, if you need a prophetic ministry, uh, come and receive from a prophetic team here. And if you need a prayer for physical healing, you can come and receive from that team. So, God bless you guys. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon. Amen.